Hello guys, this is Mike from McProgramming.org and this is our first C++ tutorial and I'm using CodeBlox right now and I'm going to show you how to create a simple hello world file which is the basic introductory file in any language that you learn so now that I have CodeBlox open, this is the opening page that you get it says start here is the tab name and we want to create a new project so I have existing projects but I'm going to create a new project and assume that y'all haven't done this before and we are going to click console application um, go into next make sure you're in C++ unless you want to do a C file but do that and then I'm just gonna call this um, tutorial tutorial and notice our project file name is changing as well as the resulting file name and we can go in here and I want to change this to hello world and that changed down here as well so our project file name and our resulting file name both change and this is pretty much just what the file is called and this is the whole um, path to that file including the workspace and all of that so now say next uh, make sure you're compiler that you have installed is hooked up to this. I give you a bunch of options. I'm going with the GNU GCC compiler. Hit finish. Alright, and then we're going to go into our sources folder and have main.cpp and that stands for C++. Go in there and it auto generated a hello world file for us. And I'm just going to go over what this means. So first we start off with pound include or hashtag include IO stream. And this is just inside of these these uh, angled brackets is the file name that we want to include. And that is very necessary because if we didn't have that, it wouldn't have the definitions for this uh, STD namespace that includes C out and inline. So this is run before the code is compiled so the computer or your operating system knows uh, this file it loads this file first and then compiles so it knows what definition to use for this STD which stands for standard what namespace does <coughs> excuse me is tell the compiler which uh, namespace to search in for the definitions in the standard library and in this case it's C out and inline. If we didn't have this, I'm going to comment it out. I'll tell you what comments are later. Uh, if we tried to run that, it wouldn't work. And what we would have to do is write std colon colon. And then right here we would also have to write that. So std colon colon. And let's run, let's build this right here. And then we're going to run and it printed it out right here. This is the program that we printed out. Everything below here uh, just tells you the execution time and the pro process returned, which is zero, which is a good thing. You want zero to be returned. But we don't want to have to write all this code all the time. So we use namespace, and we don't have to write uh, <coughs> STD or standard. There we go. So let's build this save it so we're going to build this and we are going to run it and we get the same thing so now if I had C out a bunch of times I wouldn't have to write that annoying STD standard uh, library thing so now what is int main with these parentheses and what is these curly brackets and what's on the inside alright so main is pretty much your main function and a function is set up as a return type, in this case an int, and you can have string or float or any type of primitive type right there. We'll go over that more in detail. And main lets your computer know that this is the first function that should be run. So if we have multiple functions, the computer doesn't know which one to use except for that we have the main function and we can call those functions within the main function so anything in here is what the computer runs so we could write a hundred lines of code 
And if it's not, if we don't have a reference to that function in here, in the main uh, brackets, none of that stuff is going to be used. So we have that, and we can have an argument, which goes in the parameters if we want, which would be on the command line. But for this example, we don't have that. So it returns an int, and if you're returning an int, you must have this return statement right here. And at least at this level, just always have return zero. And that means that you're, you're telling the operating system that the program was successful. All right, so let's break down this line right here that prints out hello world. See, at, see out is how it's pronounced, but what it stands for is console out. And it's a stream that's set up by this IO stream or defined by this IO stream that we included at the top. And these arrows, which are called stream insertion operators, point in the direction of the C out. So it's letting us know that hello world is to be printed out. And then we do it one more time on the other side of this, which inside of these uh, double quotation marks is a called a string or a string literal. And on the other side of that, we'll have the other two angle brackets and then we will have end L which means in line <clears throat> so <clears throat> if there was more code we would go to the next line which there is because it's return zero but that just shuts the program down so if we had other C outs uh, we would print those out as well so let me run an example say hello world and then we will do C out uh, Less than, less than, I guess I'll call it. Hello world. This is Mike from, if I can type from www.micprogramming.org. Okay, and now we want to have two more of those less than looking symbols and an end line and a semicolon. And we need to have that semicolon because that lets. Uh, your compiler know that that's the end of that uh, statement okay and another thing we can talk about is white space and what white space is is this area right here is all white space um, anything that doesn't have characters on it is white space and C++ ignores white space so I can have a bunch of space in between all of these uh, all these texts right here and it wouldn't make a difference. So it's pretty much, it would run if all of this was in one line, really long. So this is just merely to make it readable to humans and for structuring it and making it look pretty. So let's run this code right now. We need to build it. So let's save everything we have. And we're going to go over to this little circular yellow thing and hit build and then we are going to run it. Okay, so now it says hello world, this is Mike from www.mcprogramming.org. Okay, so that's how that works and I don't know what I'll get into into the next tutorial, but join me and find out. Thank you guys.